Four very common screw types to use with 3D prints are machine thread and coarse thread or self-tapping threads. And then you have a flat head type and a countersunk head type. And those four variants will get you pretty far. How about choosing between the, the machine screw and the self-tapping? Well, machine screws like this one from my multimeter are commonly found in assemblies that you will intend to remove and reassemble several times. And the self-tapping screw like this one is for assemblies that are intended to just be assembled uh, once or a few times. So that's why they put the self-tapping screw in this case in the housing of the multimeter because they're not expecting customers to often open up the unit itself. Machined threads like these or a machine screw is intended to pass through the whole material. So your whole design will be larger than the screw thread major diameter. And then it's gonna pass through like that and you should have some clearance without interference. Machine threads should be designed so that they go into a threaded mating component like this nut here in the instance where we're doing the clamping action um, like these wing nuts or like a threaded insert. This is a heat set insert. Self-tapping threads are intended to engage directly with the plastic material. And so you will have a hole design that is smaller than the major diameter of the screw thread. That means if you measure with calipers the exterior, the largest part of the threads, that's the major diameter, and you're gonna go smaller than that so you can achieve interference fitment. This brass part is a heat set insert. It's used to engage threads to the screw and we insert it into the plastic components for a pretty elegant look here. And you use a uh, soldering iron or another heating tool to uh, melt the plastic as you drive the insert into the part permanently. After you added the insert, then your screw will thread right in and you can insert it many times and remove it many times without any damage. For countersunk head style like this M3 screw, you can design a clearance hole and then add a chamfer so you can have a flush mating between the part surface and the head. In the same way, if you're using a PCB and you're clamping the PCB to a surface, then we recommend using a flat head type so that you're not putting stress on this via and most of the circuit boards uh, that come with off-the-shelf sensors from Adafruit and Amazon, they are accommodating for M2.5 size threads. Sometimes it's worthwhile to purchase your sensors from a reputable vendor like Adafruit, even if it costs an extra $10, instead of the knockoffs from Amazon because A, they'll provide a drawing that shows you the dimensions of the holes and usually the designers are considering um, allowing users to, to use common fasteners like M2, M2.5 to attach these boards into assemblies. And this, this uh, sonar sensor, for example, is not so accommodating. Even the, the M2 screw Will not, uh, will not be compatible, and you have to drill this out. McMasterCar.com is a wonderful website for finding the screw um, dimensions. So you can right away see them divided by category. You can go to metric, go to our favorite size, M2.5. Then you'll see um, such as a First option would be flathead screws. Okay, let's just choose a 10 millimeter length one. 
now you can start to see what um, materials are available. Just go with the, the cheapest one, that's metal. Then when you click on a screw, okay, this is stainless steel. We don't need stainless. We can just do zinc plated steel. The most common ones have a really large uh, package quantity for only six bucks. Once you click the product detail, then you can find all the most important uh, characteristics that you need to make your design. And I mentioned major diameter earlier. That refers to here in the drawing, that's um, the largest diameter, oops, the largest diameter of the threads from exterior to exterior. And so in this case, it's, um, it's 2.5 millimeters. And uh, it doesn't indicate the tolerance, but the tolerance is pretty small. Then usually it also will show you a, um, a hole size. In this case, it doesn't, but let's go on to another piece. So heat set inserts. Um, you should read a little bit about them whenever you have the opportunity. Um, we'll come back to the same metric size, M2.5, that's going to mate and the exterior diam diameter of this is much larger. So it says that the, the drill bit size or the whole diameter is in this case, number 24. That's a, that we'd like to have that in metric. So let's see what we get. Product detail. So your minimum material thickness is 6.37 millimeters. That's, that's along this axis where you see uh, 5.56 here. So you need to consider the length of this threaded insert. Then it says um, drill bit size 964 inch. And I thought somewhere on this sheet, it also says in millimeters, what is the hole size that you want? In this case, uh, ideally you'd have a, a tapered hole, but you can get away with simply going to um, 9.64 inch to millimeters. So you want a 3.57 millimeter hole. That means when we uh, make the hole in our design, I'll show you what we do. So this hole here was designed to take a heat set insert. Now we want to find the feature come down the feature tree until it appears. Then we will go to edit, edit sketch. And um, we have this as a parametric dimension. If we make the dimension four millimeters, then you can consider your 3D printer to add 0.3 millimeters on both sides of the radius as a rule of thumb. So it's gonna overbuild the plastic a little bit or it'll just have deviations and you'll have an oval shaped hole if you're printing in this orientation. Then, so you wanna take uh, 0.6 away from this and then you're gonna have a, a 3.4 millimeter hole. Okay, that's great. We come back to McMaster car. We said we want a 3.6 millimeter hole. We've got 3.4. I think that'll work out nicely. I happen to know in this orientation that, uh, that that's pretty much the size we want to stick with. Another wonderful resource is that you can find almost any fastener in the world here on McMaster car and you can download the step file. Um, this is going to be compatible with any different, um, any different manufacturer. They're pretty much, I've found them to be matching the dimensions, even if you bought the part on Amazon or something like that, then when you get the part, it's going to come in like this. And you need to also look out for the image quality, because if you have several fasteners, then you need to drop this quality down so that you don't bog down your computer with all the threads, uh, threads being rendered in real time. These screws in uh, this PCB are of the self-tapping kind. You can tell by how large the threads are and how pointy the tip is. And this model also is found on McMaster. So uh, self-tapping 
screws, you can simply go to metric. Then these ones have a less correspondence to the actual uh, metric size numbers. So like your M2 self-tapping screw, let's scroll down. These images are representative. So they, they do, you are looking for a screw that looks like the picture and I'm not seeing the Phillips. Okay. 18.8 stainless steel or regular steel. We'll get one that's six millimeters long. We'll look at the product detail. And then in this case, you can also find uh, the dimensions that you're working with. So two, mi two millimeters is on the, the maximum. This is the major diameter again. So you want, in our case, we're making a 1.8 millimeter hole and it, it prints out around 1.8 or 1.6 it works out nicely the hole in the PCB again is let's take a measurement evaluate measure click that surface the diameter is 2.4 millimeters so we have 0 0.4 millimeters of clearance that means the screw is going to drop right in as an overall tip you can basically get away with using just these three types of screws the M2.5 flathead, like the ones in these circuit boards, the M2.5 countersunk, um, like we could have here, and we have here on this plastic mating, and finally the self-tapping M2, which is an example right here on our um, on our PCB. And you can get just the lengths that you need to get through your circuit boards and those three sizes will get you very far.